writing and managing cross-plane configurations or what is better known as compositions can be a bit of a challenge. Let's try to solve the challenge. Let's see whether we can reduce the complexity of cross-plane compositions. Cross-plane compositions can often result in hundreds or even thousands and thousands of lines of YAML. As such, a common complaint goes something like this. Cross-plane compositions are great, but they are tedious to write and complicated to maintain. Such complaints are valid. I mean, I, I cannot say that they are not valid because they are valid. Compositions can be huge, massive, and as such, complex, but those complaints are valid only and exclusively if you forget one crucial thing that can greatly simplify everything. I'll get back to what that thing, that missing piece is later on when I show one of the many solutions we have for the problem of cross-plane composition complexity. However, now, right now, I want to start by demonstrating what the issue with compositions is. And then I'm going to show one out of many solutions for that problem. Now, let's start by taking a look at all the YAML file or compositions that I have for one of my configurations. And they are in packages slash kate slash whatever and YAML. Right. Uh, by the way, if you want to reproduce what I'm doing or see the commands that I'm executing without stopping the video, uh, the gist with all the commands is in the description. Actually, the gist is not in the description, but the link to the gist is over there. So check it out if you want to reproduce what I'm doing. Now, going back to uh, showing the YAML files, the compositions that I have for one of my configurations, I'm going to execute ls uh, dash one packages slash kate slash uh, asterisk.yaml and you can see that I have a composition. Uh, actually, this is a set of compositions for my Kubernetes clusters. One is for AKS, another one for Sivo. There is uh, cross plane YAML in definition, doesn't matter. Uh, one for DigitalOcean Kubernetes, one for EKS in AWS and Google Cloud, GK, right? So I have a set of compositions wrapped in a configuration for all the Kubernetes clusters. Uh, that I'm using in all the providers where I might be running Kubernetes clusters. Now, let's take a look at one of them. Let's say EKS, because EKS, AWS in general, is the most complex one, which results in the most complex uh, composition. So let's take a look at what I have over there, right? So now this is YAML that defines different things like EKS cluster. And uh, by the way, while we are at EKS cluster, I set the default uh, Kubernetes version for EKS to be 1.22. And that's already a bit problematic because if I want to change the default value, I would need to go through the whole YAML to figure out where that value is. So that's first of the problems. I might want to externalize or move some hard-coded values from the manifest YAML into some other place, which could be easier to edit, easier to find and manage and so on and so forth. So first problem, I don't have values. I cannot easily change. Uh, things uh, that are commonly changed. Now, if I scroll down uh, past couple of different uh, resources that I'm creating in AWS, I will reach kind role, role kind. Now you might say, hey, there's nothing special about it, but there is something special. And that's something special is that I have multiple roles for my cluster. So more than one role, and since most of the roles are more or less the same, the, the only significant difference in my case is that I changed the service that is uh, attached to that role. So I could say that this is a lot of wasted effort because all those roles that I defined are more or less the same. So there is a lot of repetition. I would like, this is my second requirement, I would like to remove that repetition. Then I have policy attachments, which have similar issue like roles, right? There are multiple policy attachments. They're more or less the same. There are very small variations. So there's a lot of repetition there as well. So you probably already noticed the theme. I have quite a few re more or less repeated entries with small variations and I could benefit from some kind of a loop or template. We'll see later what I might benefit with. But so far, I have two 
types of resources that are repeated and therefore a lot of YAML is duplicated. And the same goes for subnets. I have three subnets, I think, for three zones where my cluster might be running. And then if I scroll down, oh, here we are. Here is the real, the biggest pain point that this cluster, uh, after it's created and the creation of the cluster and the resources required for a cluster are different between Google and Azure and uh, AWS and so on and so forth. But once the cluster is created, I want to install some uh, cross-plane providers over there. I want to configure them. I want to apply some Kubernetes manifests. I want to install some Helm charts. I want to make those Kubernetes clusters production ready and all the things that I do inside of those clusters as part of this composition are almost identical. They're not the same, but almost identical. So I have hundreds, if not, yeah, hundreds of lines, close to a thousand lines of YAML repeated. Uh, the same YAML that is here in definition of EKS, like Ingress, for example, the same one is in GKE and AKS and DOK and so on and so forth. So all the rest of this YAML it should be almost identical, no matter in which composition I use it. Now that we saw a glimpse of a problem, uh, there are many others, let's talk about the solution. And solution consists of two words. No, let's say four words. So here's the solution. It's going to sound strange, right? But cross-plane is Kubernetes native. And now you might be saying, hey, how is that any solution? Well, it is because something that is Kubernetes native is likely interoperable with anything else that is Kubernetes native. In other words, cross-plane, since it was designed to work specifically in Kubernetes clusters, can work with vast majority, if not all, of CNCF projects and then many other open source solutions or commercial solutions and so on and so forth. So, one solution to the problem of the complexity behind defining and managing compositions uh, could be uh, composition functions, which has nothing to do with what I said earlier that uh, Crossplane is Kubernetes native, but that's what we, the community behind Crossplane is working. It's called composition functions, which should give you much more flexibility to define and manage functions, but that sub-project is not finished. And I cannot say when it will arrive because then I would be revealing secrets or information that I should not share. But as I said earlier in this section, uh, that does not mean that you should give up or just wait for composition functions. No, you should not do that. I will repeat one more time. Crossplane is Kubernetes native. And that means that it has an advantage that most of the other older tools do not have. Crossplane can work seamlessly with almost any other project designed to work inside or interact with Kubernetes. Pick any project, any project from CNCF, and there is a strong chance that you should be able to use it together with Crossplay. Now, if I go back to the composition complexity issue, the solution is simple. We can solve it with any tool that is used to manage Kubernetes resources. We can convert our compositions into Helm templates. We could leverage customized overlays. We could use JSONnet, which is amazing. We could use any uh, other tool for in this space, but today I'm not going to use any of those that I mentioned. I will show how to uh, solve the complexity of compositions with Carvel YTT. Now, if you're not familiar with YTT, you might want to watch this video. The link is in the description. And today, instead of explaining what YTT is, I'll jump straight into the solution. So if you're not familiar with YTT, the link is in the description. And now that I will assume that you are familiar with it, we'll jump into the solution. How can we use YTT to simplify creation and management of cross-plane compositions? So let's take a look at YTT equivalent of the EKS YAML composition file that we explored earlier. So let me output cut 
packages, YTT, Kates, uh, YTT Lib, and the subdirectory AWS inside of that subdirectory, I have config uh, YAML, and in that config YAML is my whole definition of uh, equivalent of what I showed before. And this file contains solution to all the problems that I mentioned so far. You remember that version, Kubernetes version that occasionally changes the default value? Well, now it is a variable of value uh, and structured as AWS version. And that role that is repeated over and over again, well, I put a loop that says for each role in data values, AWS roles, I want to put this YAML and that YAML is customized further uh, with additional values, like the name is the same as the name of the role and so on and so forth. So this is a snippet of YAML with values uh, derived from somewhere else. And that snippet is in a loop so that I get as many as I want. And the same goes for the attachments, yet another for loop uh, with the YAML snippet that is repeated and that YAML snippet has values derived from somewhere else. And then we have the same thing, same type of loops, uh, same logic at least for subnets. And within the route table where I should reference those subnets, yet another loop. And finally, if I go down to the bottom, there is nothing. The Helm provider and Kubernetes provider and configurations and the Helm charge that should be installed in that cluster and the Kubernetes manifest that should be applied, they are gone. They, are, they disappear. They do not exist. And the reason why those do not exist, that they are removed completely, is not that I do not need them anymore, but because they're more or less the same independently of which Kubernetes cluster I am creating and managing. And for that, I can use YTT overlays. So let's take a look at overlays YAML file. That one contains the, all those common components that are applied to every single cluster type. So here's what I'm doing here. I'm using YTT overlays uh, function or capability, and I'm saying, hey, overlay all the resources uh, that match certain specification, which I will show later, and expect to find at least one in every single definition. And that overlay will be applied uh, whenever there is spec resources entry, which all cross-plane uh, compositions have. And over here, I have all those things that are repeated, and parts of those things are hidden in if-else statements, in loops, there are variables. Uh, this by itself, a single instance, of all those resources is already simpler than it was before, not to mention that this chunk of something was repeated over and over and over again. And now with ByteT, it will be overlaid in every single composition. And then I need schema. Schema defines the, well, the schema, but for the values that should be applied uh, to all the data, to all the manifests. So let's take a look at the schema that I defined. There is cube config that says, hey, by default, this is what it is. You can overwrite it. There are the charts, Nginx ingress, and so on and so forth. And the list of providers that I want in my clusters and the list of configurations and the namespaces that I want to apply to all my clusters and identities, if there are any. And then there are sections specific to Azure or AWS and so on and so forth. So this, uh, this is the schema with default values for everything that could potentially be changed over time in any of my compositions. And finally, on top of that schema, I can overwrite part of that schema with values. And in this case, uh, I have, let's say, let's take a look at EKS values YAML, which overwrites only the version, right? So it makes it even easier to overwrite something that is specific for AWS, something that is already defined in the schema. And that's about it. Now I can generate the same YAML that I was struggling to maintain with YTT. And I will do that by executing YTT. And then I'm going to provide the path to the file, uh, actually to the directory with the resources. And I'm going to provide another path to the uh, directory uh, for AWS. I want to generate only the composition for AWS, not for everything in this case. And finally, data values file that uh, has some overrides that are specific to this instance or this definition specific for AWS EKS. And there we go, I have my YAML. And this YAML is uh, more or less exactly the same as YAML that I was managing directly in the past. So the output, the result, the end result is exactly the same, but 
the way how I manage those compositions is now much more streamlined because there are no repeated uh, blocks of YAML and uh, there are some values that allow me to modify it easier and there are some conditionals and all the good things that we all like. And I could take this YAML and store it uh, in my file system, which is what I do uh, and the result as I said, would be the same as writing the manifest or I could do anything else I would like to do with that output. I got YAML that I need, yet I have less of everything. Now, let me demonstrate the difference between pure YAML uh, used to define compositions and YTT uh, way of uh, defining Kubernetes resources, including cross-plane compositions. I will output all the YAML files, the contents of all the YAML files in uh, pure YAML, right? The standard default way to define compositions and I will pass it through WC to see how many lines of YAML I have. And there is 4,449. Let's round it up to uh, 2,400, 2,500 lines of YAML that I used to manage before YTT. Now, let me calculate all the files that I have uh, managed by YTT that produce that same YAML. And it's a bit complicated to do it because uh, they're in directories, subdirectories, not flat structure. So I'll find all the packages, uh, all the files in YTT gates. Uh, that contain uh, .yaml extension and then I'm going to pass it to cut and I will pipe it into WC and the output is 1055. I have more than 50% reduction of the amount of the lines of YAML or YTT or whatever I'm writing, more than but almost 60% savings in the number of lines and uh, that's massive, that, that's a huge change. And I did not even finish refactoring my YAML into YTT. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be even more efficient very, very soon. Uh, it should be like, I expect one third of uh, the amount of the number of lines uh, that I will have after I finish. And before, before you leave, just to make sure uh, that we all understand each other, I'm not saying that you should, you must use YTT. You can use YTT, you can use uh, Helm, you can use Customize, you can use JSONnet, maybe with Tanka, for example. You can use anything you want, as long as that something is designed to work with Kubernetes, because Crossplane is Kubernetes native. So when you think about the pain points of Crossplane, sometimes they will be solved by Crossplane community itself, but at many other times, you should look for solutions within the ecosystem. That's the advantage of Crossplane compared to others. It is part of a massive, massive ecosystem. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.